All right. Hello, everyone. This is a technical walkthrough with the one and only Shardium team for Shardium Core Boost 2 and Shardium Ancillaries Boost 2, Part 2. Um, as you all know, Shardium already had two boosts on Immunify. This is their the successors, so to say, the two uh, following boosts which are currently active on the website. They're still going to be active for um, at least 19 days, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check the numbers. Yeah, 19 days, almost 20 days. Um, again, the boosts are divided in two parts, one of them being core boost, second one ancillaries. So the core focuses on blockchain and DLT contracts and ancillaries uh, focusing on Web2 aspects of Shardium's code. Um, if the reward pools are a bit lower this time, but you know we had them big first time. They're also big this time. So 150k for core and 100k for ancillaries up for grabs. Um, this time the um, skill reward pools are uh, less punishing, so uh, you don't need like multiple crits to unlock the whole reward pool, only one. Um, but still, but still, it's going to be tough because the code was reviewed by Shardium team already, and it's probably more secured. So we're gathered here today to go through the updates and changes from the first two boosts and also for Medi and team to just present the code and anything they want to present to you guys. So let's start. Medi, team, take it away. All right. Uh, thanks, Tim. Uh, Immunify, Tim. Uh, yeah, so we had a, a great experience with, with the first round of boosts. We really appreciate everyone's efforts uh, and all of the reports and uh, the back and forth um, we've refined our processes and, and, and learned a lot about um, the White Hat community and what we can do to better facilitate you um, and to better understand each other. And also, we learned a lot about our own code base. Um, so because of that, because we, we got so much out of it, we decided to run another round of boosts. Uh, this one is a little more targeted, so the, the total bounty is a little lower, but the scope is a little uh, more condensed as well. Um, the same two big repos will be in the core two boost, that is the Shardium Validator and Shardium Core. Um, and the ancillaries will include, actually, let me go ahead and share my screen real quick on the ancillaries. Okay, so the scope has been condensed on the ancillaries. Um, we feel like we've gotten uh, some good reports and good feedback on a lot of the repos. And so, and a few repos we would like some more help with. Uh, those repos on the ancillaries specifically are the validator GUI, which just got a, a GUI refresh. So it should look a lot prettier than it did last time. Um, the command line that goes with the GUI, and then the archive server and the RPC server. Um, we feel like there's probably some more bugs uh, perhaps even criticals nested in, in these repos. So we would much appreciate your help in, in, in targeting these as well. Um, another change, so another couple of changes that we have for this, um, and Shardium, Tim, will go over this a little bit, is um, we have a, a proof of concept tool that should help make proofs of concept uh, a little easier to demonstrate um, and provide some boilerplate code for uh, getting um, relevant details from nodes that you may be targeting. Uh, with that in mind, uh, Tim, Shardium Tim, would you like to discuss the uh, proof of concept uh, boilerplate code and then also um, some of the logic uh, in inherent in some of the components? Uh, can you send the link to this POC in the chat so I can open it, please? <laughs> sure. Where is the chat here? Here we go. So here's the, the GitHub gist. Uh, and everyone can open it and see it. Uh, OK, let me share the screen, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, we took, you see my screen, right? Yes. So we took this um, kind of uh, proof of proof of concept that is based on one of the reports from one of the White Hats. 
so the idea of this, um, so we were trying to uh, build some extra services uh, on a, for, the, for the validator so we can fully automate and uh, decrease the human errors during the uh, report verification. For this purpose, we uh, there is a patch which uh, provides uh, some um, kind of configuration information uh, for the script, for the proof of concept uh, script. It's a public key, secret key, uh, node list, uh, archiver list, so all the, this is the most uh, often used uh, configuration parameters which were used during the first uh, bug bounty. So uh, to, to kind of to automate proof of concept, we add this uh, service. Uh, so this is the example uh, output sa uh, sample. So you can see that uh, there is a list of active nodes. In this case, it's just one node. Uh, there is uh, archivers, uh, ID of the current node, IP address, private and public key. <clears throat> so uh, besides that, uh, we also added uh, two, uh, two callbacks which can be used for the uh, proof of concept which will be based on a transaction flow. So uh, there are two uh, callbacks for the uh, case when transaction just uh, appeared on a node and when transaction is successfully completed. So you can use these callbacks to inject uh, your exploits uh, if you need uh, the exact uh, time when a transaction in, in a transaction workflow. <clears throat> so, and uh, this is the uh, sample of a proof of com uh, concept. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's using the uh, the uh, bug bounty service, which which is created here, right? Which is providing this configuration information. Uh, it's using all the configuration parameters, archiver URL, uh, attacker node ID. So you don't need to provide uh, all of this as static values, and you don't need. We, we will not need to uh, change on our side. It's it's increase the time for the uh, verification of the proof of concept, and it also kind of increases the chances that the proof of concept will be confirmed. Um, so here we also provide uh, some uh, samples how you can check the balance of the uh, account, attacker's account. Uh, attacker's account should be added to the genesis uh, for your local network, genesis account. So you, this is the uh, exactly static account which is provided here. You see the value is the same. And this is the balance which you want to be on an attacker's account. So we provide some samples how to get balance of the account. So for some proof of concept, you need to uh, provide the balance before and after attack. And also there is a sample how to pr uh, to create tra uh, transaction. Yeah. So uh, maybe we, we, we're planning to share, uh, probably we will plan to share the load test too, if it will be needed. So we're still deciding, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. So uh this is everything from the uh pr of concept yeah okay cool uh, and our um our motivation for, for providing this is uh we saw a lot of uh reports in the last round uh that probably that may or may not have had uh valid results and but the reporter was having some difficulty uh explaining or conveying uh, either the bug or the impact. Uh, so we hope that this kind of boilerplate proof of concept uh, helper uh, will facilitate communication be between the two parties so we can um, understand each other a little better. And to also kind of lower the bar, because I I feel like one of the pain points with the previous boost uh, was not everyone was able to get an end-to-end -end testing tool set up, um, at least in time to get any good results. So hopefully this, this uh, forwards that process along. Uh, we also have some diagrams of things that we would like uh, the White Hats to focus on. Um, so we we feel like the White Hats may have just scratched the surface of some of these repos, um, specifically the blockchain side, so the core repos. We got a lot of very good reports on um, like the shell of the code, the uh, 
the endpoint handlers, uh, signatures, uh, things like that, which is all good. Like there were a few critical reports in there that needed to be fixed. We would like to challenge the white hats this time uh, to focus in on the business logic of the code. So the consensus algorithms um, and that nature. So along those lines, we've made some diagrams and Tim, if you wanna, um, would you like the link? I'll just post it here. Yep. Need, uh, to share your screen to kind of walk through these diagrams so that the White House can better understand like the flow of data in the systems. Okay, so uh, so I unmute. Uh, so you see the screen and hear my voice, right? I unmute yes. myself. Okay, cool. So uh, we want uh, White Hats to focus on two things. Uh, it's a consensus algorithm and uh, uh, penalties and transaction flow, right? So I want to start with the uh, node startup uh, diagram just to un uh, provide a high level uh, understanding what's happening when the node is joining the network and become uh, active. So uh, everything is happening in a shard of start function First, uh, it set up some network callbacks. Network callbacks means like callbacks related to the system events like um, uh, connection timeout, uh, connection error. So everything is uh, uh, processed here. Why I'm uh, focusing on a startup? I think that there is there can be a, uh, there there is a high chance that there will be a, uh, bugs on a, a syncing state. We'll come to this. Uh, place soon. So after the network callbacks, there is a, a HTTP routes. It's the uh, routes for the handlers, uh, like different uh, services which validator nodes provide. Uh, there is also uh, node call callbacks. So node callbacks is the uh, internal events of the uh, uh, sh shards. It can be. A, um like a node activated callback it can be node deactivated callback uh and you can uh if you need you can inject uh, your own callbacks uh, it's very uh, kind of it can be easier to um kind of inject your uh, exploit in a different uh events in a different places in the system so it if it's synced with a certain uh, state change, so you can um, kind of create your own uh, custom event and uh, write a uh, callback for it. And your exploit will be activated only when the event is uh, raised. So after all of this uh, initial initialization, there is a startup logic, which is the first the node trying to uh, uh, attempt to join. So everything is an attempt joining uh, function. And when the node is joined, <clears throat> It's uh, trying to uh, sync its state. So uh, there's a function enter syncing state. Uh, uh, there are two different parts of the uh, sync. Uh, the first uh, the first part is related, non-data related part. It's like a non-account data related part. It's like, uh, uh, if you remember, there is a two blockchains. There is a, a blockchain related to the, uh, it's called cycle chain, which is related to the network configuration. So um, who is inside the network? Who is a valid uh, validator? Who is a valid archiver? This is all related to the cycle chain. Uh, and the first phase is related to the uh, cycle chain synchronization. So it's synchronized, the node synchronized the list of validators, the list of archivers, uh, the list of standby nodes, uh, the list of uh, transactions uh, related to the cycle chain, uh, to the network, right? Uh, th these transactions are, the some, uh, some types of the transactions are, are uh, initialized reward time, um, kind of claim reward for the node which uh, left active state. <clears throat> And uh, the last is uh, like a synchronization, the latest cycle record. So to for the node to be um, aware about what is the current network configuration. So then uh, the uh, validator start gossiping that it's uh, started to synchronize the account uh, data. So it's again, uh, it, it's uh, initialized that uh, scheduler which will start creating cycles on a regular basis like every minute if you remember the 
duration of the cycle uh, for the cycle chain is uh, every minute. Uh, you can consider the this duration as a kind of a block kind of thing for the cycle chain. So after the <coughs> uh, uh, gossiping the sync started the event, it start initializing the account uh, data. So first it's getting the uh, shard data. The shard data is based on a uh, cycle chain. So the idea is uh, based on a network configuration. If you remember, there is a, a hash ring of the address range. And based on this list of active uh, the validators, the node calculating the address ranges, which is uh, belongs to this node, and this node uh, is responsible for. So based on this uh, ranges, the node will start synchronizing the uh, account states from the other validators who is responsible for storing uh, accounts from that address range. Also, we have here the uh, global list. Global list is a... Uh, if you remember, there are two types of accounts. The, there is the accounts which are uh, the normal accounts, uh, like EOA, right? Uh, these accounts, uh, yeah, these accounts are sharded, like splitted by the shards, uh, the, the address range for that accounts. And there is a global accounts. The global accounts are accounts which are saved on all of the nodes. It's like uh, uh, accounts which are not belongs to the shards, but globally saved on all validators. So here we have a loop for uh, synchronizing all the account state from the ranges provided, and same for the global accounts. So, and after the node synchronized the account state, it's uh, gossiping that the synchron synchronization is finished. So I think there is a high chance that we have some uh, bugs in a, that. Um, synchronization phase. So uh, I advise to kind of pay attention and focus on this uh, place because it can uh, kind of be very efficient and uh, should have kind of very high return of time investment in uh, comparable to other parts of the system. So the next uh, thing which we want uh, White Hats to focus on is our new consensus algorithm, which was, I think, out of scope for the first bug bounty. Uh, so I will provide here the diagram, like how the transaction flow, transaction is processed uh, in our system, and uh, we'll, pay the, uh, we'll focus on a consensus related uh, uh, actions. So when user transaction is uh, uh, received by the system, it's first going to the aging phase. Aging phase is kind of synchronization phase, which uh, I think the duration is six seconds, which allow the validators to synchronize, to spread transaction across the uh, validators who are responsible for the, the processing this transaction. <clears throat> then uh, transaction is switched to processing state, uh, which uh, uh, which has uh, two main actions. First, uh, in this in this state, uh, validator is spreading the initial state uh, between uh, other validators. Initial state is the state of the accounts which are involved in this transaction. In our case, we have only coin transfers, so it's mostly uh, the state of the two accounts, account from and account to. Uh, after uh, we calculate the corresponding nodes to which we need to spread the state which validator has, it's uh, calling the broadcast state uh, P2P uh, message. It's using a broadcast state P2P message to distribute this initial state across the other validators. So, yeah, so why calculate corresponding is important because it's a new algorithm here, which is calculating which validator should send to which uh, other validator the initial state. Uh, and uh, this is done to increase efficiency, to reduce duplication. And I think it's like the ROI for the uh, errors pretty high, should be high here also in that function. So the next thing is uh, the awaiting data. So when the validator spread it, its own uh, state, which it um, kind of responsible for. It's some. Uh, it also need the uh, state of the other accounts. So it 
goes to the uh, awaiting data state where it's waiting uh, for the broadcast state message from other validators. When the account, when the validator got uh, everything it needs for the transaction to be executed, and if the uh, validator is an executing uh, execution group, uh, we know that the execution group is the uh, the group which is uh, responsible for the target uh, account of the coin transfer. So we have two accounts: source account and target account, and the execution group will be the a uh, consensus group for the uh, target uh, account for the coin transfer. So in this case, after the uh, validator, when validator received all the initial state, it's running the uh, EVM. In this case, it's just a simple coin transfer, but it still goes for the uh, EVM run. Uh, and after the uh, uh, validator got the result of the uh, local transaction, uh, execution it's uh, creating the vote uh, which uh, has uh, the result of the transaction and uh, I think the final state uh, of the uh, of the accounts after that when we have a vote we switch into the consensing uh, consensing uh, state this is where our new uh, poco uh, consensus algorithm is happening so uh, the idea of this algorithm is pretty simple so we uh we sorting the uh validators in a, a consensus group uh, of the uh, in uh, with uh, sorting nodes in the execution group and uh, choosing uh, aggre uh aggregator node the aggregator node is uh, like started from the first node with the index zero in the execution group and then uh, one by one we're choosing another aggregator the role of the aggregator is to collect all the votes from other uh, nodes from the execution group and if we collect uh, the uh, majority of the votes for the consensus group uh, for the execution group uh, the uh, aggregator node is uh, creating the uh, signed receipt and kind of trying to uh, distribute this uh, receipt across the other uh, validators in a transaction group. Transaction group uh, contains the join between the consensus group of the source account and the target account. So on the uh, execution uh, nodes, when the execution node received the signed receipt uh, from the aggregator node, it's checking that this receipt matched the local execution. If you remember, we're running our local EVM. It's checking that uh, the, the result of the transaction from the aggregator node matched the local execution. If it matched the local execution, it starts distributing the uh, result of the transaction uh, across the other nodes in the uh, tra uh, transaction group using the, the p2p uh, message poco data and receipt so this is the kind of the final uh, kind of data distribution of the transaction result <clears throat> just want to mention here that the signed receipt means that we have receipt with all the signatures uh, from other validators in execution group which run their local EVM so when they do send the vote to the aggregator they send the signature and the aggregator is kind of collecting all the signatures and then all the signatures is distributed across other validator. This is kind of the, uh, I would say the, uh, this one failure point kind of, uh, but it's temporary because aggregator node is always uh, switching. There is like a time limit when uh, aggre uh, each aggregator node has its own kind of time to collect the votes. If uh, time passed, the uh, the uh, ex uh, validator from the execution group start sending votes to another uh, aggregator node and it's uh, going to be in a loop until some of the aggregator node collected majority and start sending the receipt with the signatures uh, at that state we kind of the network decided that the transaction is finished and uh, can be uh, kind of the result of the transaction can be applied to the account state this is our, yeah, it's happening in our committing phase. This is our uh, new POCO consensus algorithm, how it works. 
And the last uh, part of the system which we want White Hats to focus on is uh, uh, penalties. Uh, for the uh, penalties, uh, uh, we have three uh, different types of penalties which are implemented. By the way, we, we need to uh, apply a certain patch for the uh, default config because penalties by default are disabled. Uh, yes. Uh, so we have three different penalties implemented. Uh, the, this uh, uh, when the node left early, the active state. When the node uh, syncing, remember this sync thing. When the sync timeout is uh, when the sync time is too uh, uh, big, uh, comparable to the average uh, syncing time from the past. And when the, the node is refuted, what is the node refute? Uh, the node can be marked as lost by other nodes uh, in a certain situations when the node is not responding for the uh, if, uh, for the uh, messages. In this case, uh, and if the node see that it was marked as lost, uh, by C, I mean the node can check the cycle record every uh, block. It can check the cycle record and say, okay, I um, I'm appeared in a lost, but I'm not lost. Uh, I need to refute it. So this is the purpose of the uh, uh, kind of refute action. But uh, for each refute action, the node will be uh, punished, can be punished if it will be activated, if this uh, penalty will be activated. So when penalty event is uh, raised on an, um, on each validator, it's then uh, creating the uh, penalty transaction, injecting this penalty transaction. This transaction is uh, not a user uh, kind of normal user transaction. It's a uh, internal transaction. We call it internal transaction. Uh, the type of the internal transaction is internal TX type penalty. So to distinguish it from other internal transactions, because we have other internal transactions like um kind of uh, claim reward uh, like uh, change config uh, change network parameters uh, there are certain uh, conditions which i think can be uh, vulnerable all of the steps can be vulnerable so the the there is a check for the penalty uh, transaction that the node and operator account should exist so if you remember, there is a, uh, for each node, we have a node account. And for uh, each node account, we also have an operator account. The operator is the, uh, the kind of the subject who is uh, providing staking amount for the node. Uh, also, uh, during this processing of the penalty transaction, uh, to synchronize penal, uh, penalty transactions because they are raised uh, across uh, the validators independently based on the network event, uh, we need a way to synchronize uh, these penalty transactions and it's calculating the so-called future timestamp. I think it's also can be vulnerable somehow here. So it needs to be kind of better to review it. <clears throat> by the white hats. So the future timestamp is the, uh, I think, end of the uh, cycle where the transaction is uh, was created. Uh, then also another uh, tricky thing is the, uh, the when the transaction is created, the nodes kind of different validators kind of competing between each other who will inject this uh, transaction to the network. And um, there's a condition that so-called lucky node, which is actually the uh, the five uh, neighbor nodes closer to uh, transaction hash. So it's kind of uh, calculated the certain five lucky nodes, which are responsible for in, uh, where the transaction can be injected. Uh, there is also like a kind of sleep until the future timestamp happening. And after that, the uh, the validator is injecting this uh, penalty transaction. So all of these things, I think, are, has a pretty high chance for some vulnerabil vulnerabilities uh, which can be exploited. Uh, yeah, so I think I've finished with the penalties. 
Okay, cool. I wanted to add a, a clarifying note. Um, so the general rule of thumb for what's in scope is in, is that uh, it's covered, it's enabled by the default config. Um, penalties is an exception to this. It's not enabled by the default config um, and it's not going to be enabled by the default config. But we're telling you now that, um, and we've we provided a gist, it's linked in the, in the comments, that will uh, set the correct settings and enable uh, slashing and penalties so that um, they'll run on your network. Um, so they are in scope for this boost, and we would appreciate you looking into them. So um, I think that's what we wanted to cover. Uh, Immunify Tim, do you have any specific questions uh, for us? First of all, big thank you for this extensive cover. This was very detailed. Thank you, guys. I have one question about um, the recent change log that we posted on the core to boost page, maybe. Maybe if you can briefly cover it um the very uh, sure. few updates yeah um, so let me go right. send the link on the chat yeah that'd be, that'd be helpful yep one second okay so i think yes it's in resources here so here's the link to the or to boost and I'm speaking about meet contest change look. That's for Shardium, two for Shardium, and a bunch for Shardium Core. So if you can maybe go through them, kind of sure. briefly explain what are they about. Be awesome. Okay, I got it right here. Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, so most of these fixes um, are things that were from the previous bug bounty that didn't quite make it in uh, the time frame for the launch of this bounty. Um, so uh, a lot of these are, um, I, I guess, lower tier. We, we've removed some. I'll just go through them one by one. Um, so the first one, this was fixed since the launch of this bounty. Um, it was reported that uh, the, the slashing and penalty system um, was subtracting the, the, the penalty twice. Uh, so we hopefully we have a fix for that. Um, and then we've we've uh, removed some unused um, functions in the code uh, so that white hats don't waste their time on it. Um, a lot of these shard as core fixes are also like security and hardening fixes. Um, adding cycle to the unjoin request allows us to uh, hopefully keep it current and less likely to be uh, replayed. Um, let's see, the get cycle, uh, get stored cycle by timestamp was a super minor adjustment um, to how cycles are returned. Uh, hopefully, that, that's a, it's such a tiny code change that hopefully there's no bugs there, but, but please do check it out. Um, I'll, let's see more of this commenting out unused code. Um, fixing more signature verification. So there were a lot of signature errors and there might be more signature errors uh, hidden in there. Um, signature errors were usually a good way to get a higher or, or crit severity rating. Um, let's see. And then these last two are stability fixes that, um, well, the link to the actual fixes is provided here. So I, I don't have off the top of my head the exact um, issue that they were being that they were uh, addressing, uh, but most of these came in from the previous boost. So not a ton to talk about there. Most of them are pretty small. They just didn't make it in that time. Um, and what, I guess one thing in general going forward that we, the Shardium team, hope to be better with is uh, making sure that these fixes are correctly well documented and, and presented to the White Hat community uh, in a timely fashion. Um, so yeah, that's all for those. Not not a ton there. They're not huge, but um, they're changes. So we want to let y'all know about it. Perfect. Thank you, Mehdi. Um, guys, do you have any questions? Feel free to raise them in Discord or here in the chat. Let me also do this thing. Your Q&A should be enabled so you can ask the, your questions there. So in case you have anything, please raise it right now. In the meantime, Maddie, team, thank you for the presentation. Sure, very, Tim, anything, very 
uh, I'm sorry, Shardium, Tim, anything you feel like we've forgotten? Any confusion from the previous bounty that you'd like to address? Uh, did we mention that the there is a focus areas which will be kind of uh, has a certain multiplier for the uh, for the rewards and a new uh, bug bounty like the consensus algorithm bugs uh, that will have a multiplier so they will be rewarded higher than the uh, same severity bug in other areas. Uh, yeah, Immunify, Tim, can you uh, expand on that a little bit? So Correct. we can provide yeah. in context, yeah. but as for as for the, how those actual rules work, yeah, uh, this I'll, is, I'll rely on you. Because this is important, right. kind of. Yeah. 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 So there were there were certain um, impacts added to the um, to the core and ancillary boost. Um, we call them internally. We call them custom impacts. So those uh, went through our verification. And essentially, what Shardium team did is that. It, in order to focus more on the code that they want to focus on, uh, they've introduced a couple of custom impacts. I don't think I can name them immediately, but you will notice them in the uh, impacts section because they differ from the severity classification system that Minify has. Um, and for example, yeah, for example, for core, I think one of them is like bypassing slashing. This is going to be a critical impact. And then um, it's going to be like bypassing staking requirements. I think this is also a critical impact introduced by you. So all of this, uh, all of the vulnerabilities that will fall within those impacts and will be confirmed by the Shardium team will receive a higher reward because of the severity applied. So um, yeah, you can check them out here, and of course on the on the explore pages. And sure. the same applies uh, yeah. to yeah. yeah. These are like the the points of emphasis that we would like the the White House to focus right. on, and and. Uh, a big one is the consensus alg algorithm itself. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I guess that is to say, like less in the in the flaws in the actual implementation of the code, and more in the flaws in the logic. Like if, if there is a logical flaw in in the proof of quorum, um, we would like to reward that extra um, for you taking the time to dig in and understand it and expose us. So yeah. So yep. we want kind yep. of white hats to focus more not only on a kind of. A shallow surface of the parsing the messages, uh, kind of no JS uh, uh, overflow issues, some kind of general uh, vulnerabilities. We want more focus on a allowed logic of the transaction processing, cycle chain processing, like everything which is custom for our project. Yes. Yeah, the the, uh, the the shallow, the parsing, the signatures, those are still extremely important. If you find those and they're critical, they'll still get rewarded as critical. Um, I think yeah. signature forging was one of the best uh, reports from the previous bug bounty. Like we, we, we never thought that it is possible to forging the signatures, but it looks like it was possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were having a great time. Yeah, so there's that. Right, thank you. Thank you, Jens. Yeah, um, guys, as Shardium team has, has correctly mentioned, the focus is a bit different for this boost and kind of this deep, deeply uh, covered vulnerabilities are something that they're interested in. So let's let's yeah, try we, and break those. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, we, we will be super impressed if you can show us a critical vulnerability that assumes all of the code is working correctly. So it's just the business logic part. That would That would be amazing. But anyway, yeah, I think I think that's all we have. So um, if there's no more questions. Perfect. I have the time. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, and actually, no no questions from the community. Very very clear presentation from you guys. So let's call the day. Thank you everyone for attending this technical walkthrough call. It will be soon uploaded to our YouTube. So check it out there. And yeah, good luck with the with the two boosts. And once again, Tim, Medi, thank you so much for the presentation. See ya. Yeah, thank you.